Welcome to the tutorial video for the pewter casting task and in this one I'm going to be going through with you how to find the template, the AutoCAD template for your mould, um, open it in AutoCAD, insert your design into it and then save it in a um, format that we can then put into the laser cutter software. Okay, so to start with you're going to go to connect, okay, and over in connect you've got um, your content in our class, we've got our content folder, laser cut, pewter casting um, folder in there, and then this one here. So you're going to download that and then open that on a computer where you have access to AutoCAD like this one here. And it should open up and look something like this. I'm just going to take a few minutes to explain what's going on with this template for you so you can understand what you're looking at. Here we have these three rectangles that are directly next to each other. So they're just divided by this one line here. Okay, there's no extra line there at all. That's just directly next to each other there. They represent three parts of your mold. This is going to be the one that you're putting your engraving design onto. This is gonna have the outline for it to cut. And this is gonna be the back panel to make the back of it nice and smooth. All of these circles here are holes that are gonna get cut in for aligning the three parts together so that your design here and your cutout there are going to be perfectly aligned. This part here is the sprue that's going to cause that kind of funnel shape where you're going to pour the metal down and it's going to go directly to the top of your um, design. These pink lines here, these are just the vents. We're actually just going to have them on a different setting in the laser cutter so that it cuts along those lines but are not very deep, not all the way through the material, just enough to give a little bit of air um, a way for the air to escape out of your mould as the molten metal is pouring in. These little ones don't need to go all the way to the end, that's fine. Um, they're just there at the bottom to make sure that no, no air gets caught in the bottom there. Okay, so that is what we're looking at here. Why do I put these in different colours to the other ones? Um, a, it helps me visually see what's going on and what I want those different parts of um, my design to do but also when I save this and open it up in auto laser it will recognize that different colors are going to be different layers and it's super easy then for me to isolate that layer and change the settings to what I want for each of those layers so whenever I have a set of lines that I want to have as a different setting in the laser cutter I change them to a different color and all of the ones that are that color will then have that setting attached to them now, if you have a your own computer with autolades on it, you can actually preset all of that information into those colors so that you always use the same colors for the same thing. But with a communal laptop where those settings get changed all the time, it's just easier to pick certain colors and um, make sure they're all just different colors and then change your settings when you need to. Okay, so let's go and get our design and bring that in. So I'm gonna go open. And here I've already located my folder and found the DXF file that I saved out of Illustrator. I'm going to open that and it opens it in a new window again. Now at this point it's bringing it in somewhere we can't see it so I'm just going to go and find it and the easiest way to do that is to actually give a zoom command called zoom extents. Now you can do that over here as well. Select the correct zoom option um, and then utilize that or you can do Z enter E enter on your keyboard. Now I don't know if you can see that very clearly but it has come in there um, as a really dark kind of color. I'm just going to scroll on my mouse back a little bit so that it is oops, um, not the whole screen and that way I can select it. Now I'm doing a select window. In AutoCAD your tool is by default the select tool and if I click on the left and then move my mouse to the right I get this lovely selection square or rectangle. And then anything that's completely contained within that is selected. Selecting from different sides and clicking and dragging all do different things. As long as I get the whole thing selected, I can then copy and paste it to move it into the window that I want it to be in. So using Control C and then going back over to my other window and Control V will bring that in. And I'm just going to put it over to the left here for now. Okay, so that it's somewhere. And I'm going to just change the color of that. It's not going to change the... Um, the text color because I didn't ungroup it okay but that's still so that's still in there but it has changed the color of the outline which is nice 
Okay, now before I go any further, I want to mirror this design. If I don't do that now, I might likely forget that I need to do it. Um, it's quite important, otherwise that text is going to come out back to front on my finished product, which is not really what I want. Okay, so I'm going to again use my window to select that, and I'm going to go to the mirror tool up here, or type in MI and enter on my keyboard. Now, I'm not really too phased about this because I have my polar tracking down here on, so I'm going to click somewhere below it, then move until my mouse kind of snaps to 90 degrees, and then click to keep that. And I do want to erase the source object. So I'm going to press Y on my keyboard and then go Enter. And that's going to mean that I don't have the one underneath it now. So I've just got my design there, and you can see now the text is backwards, which is what I wanted to do. Okay. The next thing I want to think about is, do I want to have my engraving going all the way to the edge of my design? Or do I want to have a little bit of a pewter past that that's not um, as deep as the engraving, as a bit of a border around it? Now I'm going to do that anyway so that you guys can see what that is, but that choice is entirely up to you. Now, what I have here is this line here, which is currently a spline. Now I need to actually convert that to a polyline. Okay, if I don't convert that to a polyline, it won't actually let me do an outline around it. So I'm going to click convert to polyline and 10 is fine. Okay, now when I use my offset tool, it will actually let me select that. So I'm going to go O, enter for my offset tool. It's also up here if you prefer to do that. And the first thing it asks me is, can I please specify a distance that I want to offset? Choose yourself either 0.5 millimeters or 1 millimeter to do that. Okay, so I'm going to type in 0.5. Oh, let's make sure that actually is 0 0.5. There we go. And then enter. And that's going to now make that 0 0.5 millimeters away from the outside there. Okay, now if I'm done with that, I can press enter or escape to get out of that tool. Okay, so I now have this outside boundary. Now the next thing I need to do as well is think about when I bring this over here into this middle um, panel and attach the top of my sprue to my design, where is that going to be the least disruptive space to do it? And this top bit here is not going to be a good option. So I'm actually just going to rotate this around so that I have it on the side here instead. So again, I'm going to select all of my piece. I'm going to use the rotate tool, which is R, O, enter, or again up here, if you prefer. Select somewhere in the middle, and then again, get my mouse or cursor to snap to that 90 degrees and click to keep that. Okay, so I've now got that in a good location. I'm going to move it, okay? Move tool is M enter, or again, move tool up there. I'm going to pick somewhere. I'm not too fussed at this point because I'm going to move around my um, little bits of my lines there anyway to match my design. Okay, so I'm bringing that somewhere in close to that location. And now I'm just going to zoom in. Now I'm going to use zoom window. So over here you can do that. Or again, Z enter, W enter, if you want preferring this keyboard shortcuts. Now I'm going to select each of my lines and then just get them to snap to somewhere on my actual design. Now with the sprue, I do want to have at least two millimeters there as a gap between the bottom of my sprue. Otherwise, I run the risk of it being too close or too wide. Okay, so somewhere between two and four millimeters. Each of these lines, we just want these ones here somewhere near the top so that any extra air can exit out that way there. And these ones here, we're just going to make sure that there's no air trapped in the bottom down here um, with the initial part of the pore. So somewhere in there on my outline. Once I'm happy with their locations, I can just press escape to deselect each one of those lines. And then zoom previous or Z enter P enter to bring me back to my previous view. Okay, if you, your lines didn't snap nicely to your outline because you didn't um, convert it to a polyline that stayed as a spline, you don't have to convert it. You can just come down here and use the nearest snap option. Okay, select nearest as one of your snap options and then it will snap to that line as well. Okay, so we're now going to take this um, and move it into our engrave panel. So we're just going to use our window selection tool again to select just our engrave and cut parts, and we're going to copy them over into this panel. 
So I'm going to use my copy tool, CO enter, or again, copy tool is up here. And it's asking me now to specify the base point that I want to copy from. Now, because I need it to be in the exact same location in this panel as it is in this panel here, I'm going to select a, um, the top left of my panel as the point that I'm going to move it from. And then this top left of the left-hand panel um, for where I want it to go. And now I know that it's in the exact same place. Now, I don't want to keep copying, so I'm just going to press Enter or Escape to get out of that. Now, in this panel, I don't need the outline, the cut outline. I just need whatever lines I need for engraving. So I'm going to delete that outline there. If you didn't have an outline, you'll need to leave it as it is. Okay. Because I have an outline on this one here, I'm going to well, I need to delete any of the inside bits anyway and just leave my actual outline. I don't think that did my outline, did it? No. Okay, so I'm going to delete the inside one and just be left with my outside outline. And that is now all ready to go. Now, I could get pedantic and remove that little bit of a line there, but since it's just going to cut it anyway, I don't need to worry about that. Now, as I was mentioning before, having things on different, um, having these as different colours allows me to quickly and easily select them over in the auto laser software. So I'm going to change that to being a different colour again because I want different settings to these lines here and these lines here. Okay. Now that's pretty much all we need to do on this before we can take it into the laser cutter software and save it in there. Oh, sorry, and open it in there. Open it in there to have it um, running. So I'm now going to save it. Now this Two types of saving we want to do. First of all, you want, are wanting to save it. Uh, make sure you save it into the right location as well because you don't want it saved in downloads. Um, you know, make sure you save it, first of all, as an AutoCAD drawing so that if you do need to come in and make any changes to it, if you've got one of the steps, whatever else, you can easily and quickly do that without having to try and work with the difficulty of having it as a grouped model in the DXF. Okay, so you'll save it as an AutoCAD drawing. And then you're also going to save it as a DXF. Now, there's lots of different .DXFs down here. What we want is the very top one that says AutoCAD 2018 DXF. Okay, save it as something that you are going to recognise. Okay. So I'm going to call this what? Batman Pewter Casting Mould and save that. I don't want it in my documents. I want it in a file that I can actually find. So I'm going to put it in there where I had my other DXF file. So I know that this is the mold because I've given that a different name. Okay, and go save. Okay, and now if you don't actually end up saving it before you try and exit it, it will prompt you to save it as a normal AutoCAD file anyway. Now, from this, once you've finished saving it and closed down AutoCAD, you will need to put your DXF that you want to laser cut onto a USB drive so we can put it into the machine, into, sorry, into the computer that we're going to be laser cutting from. Alrighty. Excellent. So that is everything for this bit, and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.